The current is completely adjustable. There's 52 speeds, so she can slow down. We can pick up the pace if you want to challenge her or knock her to the back of the pool. I'm talking to the camera. You're on. Oh. <laughs> we got 29 watt watchers, yeah. Oh, okay. Keep going. All right. My goggles are... Goggles are right? Yeah. Well, I need the other one. Got our first part. Thank you. If you have any questions, let us know. Um, this is not at a gym. This is actually, though some gyms do have endless pools, this is actually the endless pools factory showroom. So our employees use them in the off hours, and when people want to try an endless pool, they come here, we have all our models on. Okay. And we have Coach Adam joining us now. Thanks for all the love. Yep, exactly. We are in Aston, Pennsylvania, uh, just south of Philadelphia International Airport. The advantage of this over a normal pool is there are no flip turns. You get a much better workout. You can build endurance better. And also, as you'll see, it's easier to do a coaching session. He can, Adam, who's about to get in the pool, will be right next to our swimmer, Jackie. Wave in there. Hello, Jackie. Hi. Say hi. Hi. Um, can I see me? Left arm crossover. Easy to create. Yeah, we're going to be waving this. Hi. Somebody waved back at you. Thanks, Slam it, bro. You can see um, people back on it? What's that? that? You can see people back or they uh, said People they... are typing. Hello, Apollinary. Um, yeah. If you go to endlesspools.com, you can see our address and get directions, our phone number. But uh, we are in Aston, Dutton Mill Road, and here is Adam coming in now. Hi, everybody. Hey there. Your head's out of the frame. If you want to duck down a little, that'd be great. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, I can see you swim for a little bit so okay. I can get on top of the stroke. Becker says hi, Adam. Feel free to talk off the stroke. You can hear Hi to Danny Ceramic. Thanks for joining us. Swimming is an excellent exercise if you want to lose weight. I'm talking to Slamet Bro, who just asked that question. Um, yeah, I mean, it is an excellent cardiovascular exercise, and with the endless pool, it's even better. It's fine there. Shakra One, I'll ask you a question in a minute. Hand placement. Okay. We're going to work on where your hand is coming through the recovery and entering the water. Yeah, that ain't going to happen. In front of you. So. You can see yourself in the mirror on the bottom. Yeah. And you can see where your shoulders are in the mirror. You can see where your head position is. Yeah. And hopefully you can see where your hand is being placed in the water. And ideally, with a good swim stroke, you'll recover so that your hand is in a good position to begin the anchor phase of a stroke. Mm -hmm. And mechanically, that should be in line with your shoulder. Okay. So that as you're pointing your fingertips down and your elbow is coming up and you're rotating your hips to come through the stroke mm -hmm. you're able to get as much out of the muscles on the front part of your body as possible mm -hmm. so rather than coming in right towards the center line and then sweeping your arm out underwater uh -huh. to come into alignment with that shoulder yeah. bringing your arm through the recovery and placing it already in line with the shoulder out in front of you so it's more like a superman okay. rather than a pencil yeah Okay. You can see yourself in the mirror on the bottom, mm -hmm. and you can watch your hand patterns come through the recovery and place out in front of you. So mm -hmm. take five strokes, not thinking about any of that. Take five okay. or f ten strokes even. And then see after ten, think about, okay, where's my hand now? And then try to think about being aware of where it's going to be. Then I'm going to give you a drill that can help bring your hand into the right position. But to have your hand in the right position at the front end of the stroke and come through the recovery clean uh -huh. will set you up to use the right mechanics for the stroke mm -hmm. when your arm is now underwater and yeah. you're using different muscle groups to propel yourself forward. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we could probably, should we slow it down a little bit or? Do you prefer? In front of you. 
Um, just to answer some of the questions coming up, there are uh, 52 speeds on this, so yeah, you can speed it up and slow it down. It's good for any level. Olympians use it, beginners use it. Um, hello back to North Carolina, hello back to Morocco, thanks everyone who's joining. And Shacker, yes, you are absolutely right about the crossover, good call. You can have no trouble with the English Channel, I'm sure. I mean, other than it being really long, of course. We're just going to do five strokes, not thinking. <laughs> Ten strokes, normal. Hands coming in where it was before, and then start to think about what we talked about, about your hand placement. Okay. Thanks for all the love, guys. Five more. I want you to, to, to transition right into swimming. You don't have to stop at all. Okay. Go, go from what you were doing before, I'll count off the strokes, and then we'll see where your hand placement changes. So right now you're doing just what you were before. Do a few more of that, and in mid-stroke without stopping, begin to feel out how wide your hand needs to go. Okay. Adam, we have a swimmer, I guess, in England. He's getting ready to do the panel. He said that he experiences leg drop when he's in the, an a, endless pool. A great question. What? Keep, keep going, Jack. Yeah, I'm answering your question. A lot of that might have to do with head position, and I'm going to see what we can do with Jackie's head position, and maybe changing that and seeing if, if that can do anything to play with her hip position in the water. I'll get to that in just a second. Do you hear that, Shacker? Are you exerting too much that effort? Yeah. Hey, Alexandra, thanks for joining. It's not even holding on. It's like trying to swim too fast. All right. Go through 10 more strokes again as you had before. I'll, I'll tap you on the head. Okay. And after I tap you, bring your hands wider. And then I'll start to maybe even get my hand in the front there to, to push so you out of the so way. Like if that. you're still so coming too close. Yeah. Like that? Like, yeah. Okay. In line with your shoulder. Uh, someone asked how many people from Pennsylvania uh, wear. Hey, Utah, welcome. Thanks for joining. Keep going, keep going, keep going. That's There's better. five of us here from PA. A little bit wider, a little bit wider, a little bit wider. Keep going, keep going. That's good. North Dakota, thanks for joining. Uh, metronome, an endless pool is actually heated, and that's one of the advantages of it being so small. It's a lot good. more affordable to keep warm, and you can get them indoors easily like this one. Right, so it's, it's an odd thing to do if you've been swimming a certain way for a certain amount of time, Yeah. to even make a change of, of half an inch or so. Sometimes yeah. someone will be coming into their center line and I'll say, go wide, go wide, feel like Superman, reach really wide. And then they'll go from center line to over here, just a little bit, and it'll feel different because yeah. they've made so many impressions with that, that muscle memory over yeah. years and years of swimming. So it's intended to feel weird and awkward. Yeah. Now, what I'm gonna have you do is something called a fingertip drill. Okay. And that's where you drag your fingers on, along the surface of the water. And let me hop in and I'll show you as well. Yeah, like just in like that 10 seconds, like my, it just feels so different. And like my arms and my legs just feel different as I'm swimming. Adam, do you have a particular style? He's asking if you're a T1 or swim smooth. A little bit of everything. I've, I've met with some really talented uh, Olympic type coaches and, and having observed them and their athletes over time and having spent some time uh, following total immersions practices and techniques. I, I don't want to say that I completely wholeheartedly endorse any one or the other. I, I'm an engineer here at Endless Pools and I also coach swimming and so I, I, I sort of go with what makes sense to me and what makes sense to the athlete based on any kind of limitations that they have. Some people might be more flexible than others so they can go with higher elbows on a recovery. They might have uh, more range of motion in their shoulders and more power in certain places. Some people might have shoulder injuries so they have to go lower and wider and less elbow bend on the recovery and it, and it sort of depends on the athlete. So Jackie, what I'm going to try and show you here is 
I'll go 10 strokes, swimming close to center line, 10 strokes with my, my hands entering much wider, okay. and then I'll do 10 strokes on the uh, fingertip recovery drill, okay. and that will help me get, give a little bit of awareness for where my shoulder and chin are relative to where my hand is by dragging my finger on the surface of the water okay. and, and, and feeling where my hand is relative to the rest of my body. So 10, 10, and 10. Okay. Yeah, S legs, you're right. It is uh, called endless because of the swim current. It's not jetted, it's really pretty smooth. There's no bubble, so you can see the mirror. And as you can see, he just keeps swimming. He's not gonna hit anything. Uh, we can adjust the speed if it's going too slow for him. And next time we do this for all the comments from Russia, I will try to have someone here who can read Russian. Sorry, I cannot answer your questions. This is much better use than a dining room table would be for you, Chapter One. Totally agree. That's exactly where this should go. Yeah, he doesn't use his dining room anyway, right? Yeah, this is totally modular. This can go indoors. This comes in pieces. If you can fit a... Uh, basically, a sheet of plywood into a room, you can construct this in there completely. But then I was reinforcing that by dragging my fingers on the surface of the water and feeling where my hand is relative to my head. Yeah. So try fingertip drill. Okay. Watch yourself in the mirror on the bottom. Yeah. It's tough to see for our viewers where the mirror is, but there's a mirror underneath that's about this long and about this wide. So with you about four feet above the mirror, you can see what's happening. <clears throat> yeah. And you can see your profile, and you can see where your shoulders are, and you can see where your hands are placing. So work with that and think about hand recovery and where it is relative to your shoulder. <laughs> yeah, you shouldn't. You don't you usually have a problem getting the water in your nose. It's not. It's really no different yeah. than swimming in open water. I mean, you're swimming against the current. Mike Smith, you'd asked a question, and I apologize. I forgot what it is. You can re-ask that, Mike Smith. I will answer your question. Fingertip, here, fingertip drill should feel high elbows dragging your fingertips on the surface. Okay. And then once the elbow is just about locked straight, you're in the water. Okay. So it's elbows, recover, recover, recover. Relax your hand more in the recovery. Recover and tension right there. Okay? Thanks, Shocker. It's been great having you. Um, and the cost varies a lot. We have a lot of different models, a lot of different options. Uh, give us a call. We're happy to help you out. Find what works for you. Close. Okay. Stand here right now and push your fingertips forward in the water. Feel, feel yourself dragging the fingertips. The purpose of a fingertip drill is to get a little bit of a sensation about what it feels like to have your hand at a certain position relative to your elbow, relative to your shoulder, relative to your head throughout the recovery. It can help Loosen up your arms in the recovery. If, you're, if you've got really tense arms and you're swinging them wide, and it also helps with the spatial relationship of your hands relative to your shoulders. Uh, these can be shipped. We have pools in over 100 countries. Someone asked about the water purification. It's copper and silver purification, a very little bit of chlorine. The cover controls the humidity. We can roll it back when we're done with the video. It seals everything in. If you keep it covered, you shouldn't have much of a humidity problem indoors. That's good. Left arm, get it a little bit lower. Yeah. Get your fingertips along the surface of the water. But I can see right now that you're thinking about it <laughs> yeah. and you're seeing in the mirror yeah. where your hands are relative to your shoulders and relative to your head. So yeah. work on that for another few strokes. You want a good solid concrete pad under this s wigs Because yeah, they weigh a lot. There's about 3,000 gallons in here. And it's a great pool to learn to swim in. Uh, 76 baby. Um, the water is warm, it's not very deep, so it's, it's and it's totally adjustable as you improve. That's good. <laughs> so on that note, watch what happens to my body when I carry tension in my arms through the recovery versus when I go loose and relaxed in my fingertips uh, and, and kind of almost like it's sloppy, yeah. almost like it's spaghetti arms or I'm, I'm making relaxed painting strokes on the surface of the water. One of the viewers had mentioned before also about um, hips coming down and head position in the water. And I, I want to show also what it's like to have uh, tension in, the, in my neck and, and a head position that's kind of coming forward and swimming in an endless pool and maybe experiencing your feet coming down a little bit. And then I'll do 10 strokes a little tense and I'll do 10 strokes fingertip drill relaxing and also relaxing my head and my neck, bringing my head down in the water and allowing 
the water to support the weight of my head and allowing the water to come almost up over the back of my head. And you'll probably see my hips position change in the water. So I'll do 10 tense strokes and 10 relaxed strokes with the fingertip drill and relaxed head position. Yeah, this is going international, so not everyone's going to speak English. We apologize. This is our first broadcast. We'll see what we can do for the next one. And to answer someone's question, it does not come with David Hasselhoff. We would love to get David Hasselhoff in an endless pool if we could. It hasn't happened yet that I know of. See the difference? We're able to see the muscles kind of relax a little bit. Yeah. Swimming is such a, 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 it's a, it's an aerobic activity that is so reliant on moving cleanly through the medium. Yeah. When you're running, you're fighting air, and it's not, it's a lot more forgiving than water. If you're mm -hmm. tense through the water and you're not getting through a small area in the water, and you're not being efficient in the water, it's gonna provide a lot of resistance and make it a lot harder. Yeah. So, relaxing your head position, relaxing your neck, working on that fingertip drill to set up the front end of your stroke mm -hmm. is important. Have you swim for a minute or two, uh -huh. then we're gonna work on something else. To answer another question, this pool is 54 inches deep. There's also benches around the side that okay. return the water channel. Okay. So, even for up. kids, they have like a safe place to just get up on the bench and stand. It's really easy to stand in this pool. A little more. Okay. Go ahead. If you guys talk to breathe, I have stuff to do, so like, <laughs> I don't talk to you These pools are used for aquatic, excuse me, aquatic therapy for dogs. So yeah, there are some veterinarians who use them. Uh, we got some great pictures on our Flickr account and on Pinterest of really adorable pictures of dogs getting better in endless pools. Cats don't like them, obviously. Hey, Alana, thanks for joining. We do also have swim spas, which are basically like molded acrylic with the jets and all of that. And it, you can put our current in it, yeah. So you can get it as a hot tub type style. Do you feel any of the different muscle groups getting used because of that? Yeah. What we tried to do a few minutes ago is place Jackie's hands a little bit further apart and in line with into the water and in line with your shoulder. Assuming you're applying the right hip rotation, you're able then to use and, and get leverage from the right muscle groups to propel yourself forward through the water. A lot of what swim coaches are teaching and, 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 and having their athletes work with now is the idea of moving yourself through a static medium and, and thinking it, of it as if you're anchoring your, your, your arm into something you can grab a hold of, almost like sand or, or, or muck at the bottom of a of a pond mm -hmm. and pulling yourself past a fixed position, yeah. that's the thought now rather than pushing the water past you. So okay. it's, if that's the most efficient thing to do, how do we get the muscle groups to do it? First thing that you can do is get your hand placed in the right spot mm -hmm. so that you can get the best anchor, the best bite in the water at the, the front end or the front quadrant of your, your stroke. Mm -hmm. Everything is between your head and your hand position. Wide hands is a good way to do that. The next thing to do is setting your anchor with your fingertips down, fingertips spaced about that far apart, not necessarily bending down at the wrist, yeah. but keeping your wrist and your forearm all in one plane and getting your elbow up high so that you can set the anchor in the water. When you're trying to do that, 
It involves hip rotation, though. And hip rotation isn't just wiggling back and forth in the water. Hip rotation is rotating around the center axis through your body. In rotating like that, you're able to apply power from the muscle groups from your shoulder forward rather than keeping straight arms and using smaller muscle groups in the back of your, your arm that can't really sustain the movement for quite as long a period of time. So what we're gonna do now is a couple different drills. We're gonna do uh, a fist drill and we're gonna work with some paddles too to give you the sensation of getting those elbows high, keeping that plane solid mm -hmm. so that you're not bending at your wrist and using as much of your forearm as possible to get a good bite in the water. So let's turn it back on. Uh, this pool is heated. Usually you want it around low 80s just because you're gonna be active in it and you'll overheat otherwise, but it gets warmer if you prefer. And yeah, we do so have them in Canada, like 15, absolutely. Thanks for asking. Thanks, Eswigs. Head down a little bit more. You want, you want to have relaxed muscles back here so that you can get the full recovery relaxed and get the good hand placement in the water. And once it's placed in the water, then you start to carry the tension for the high elbow and the anchor. Relaxed on the recovery. Someone said her arm position is too high to catch. Is that your assessment? Arm position is too high to catch? Right. As in, it's not going, it's going it, it's not going low enough? Is that is that the idea? Um, I don't know. Now, if you can explain your question, we'll uh, answer it. And our coach is Adam. He's uh, an endless pool engineer and... What's up? Can we keep going? Or? Also a swim coach. Yeah. Okay. Too high in the water. Okay. Too high in the water. So one, one of the techniques is to get your arm lower in the water and to glide out on that. Uh, from a resistance perspective, I, I'm of the belief that you want to punch as narrow a hole in the water as possible and in order to keep yourself streamlined for as long as possible, keep your hatch catch high in the water almost as if you're on a tabletop and you're loose in your arm through the recovery, loose, 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 tabletop and the tension happens there and you're only a little bit underwater and you're gliding because your other arm at that same time is propelling you forward and you're trying to have as minimal, little bit of resistance as possible. So propelling forward arm high as if you're on a tabletop and you're carrying tension in your arm but it's not pushing down, you're not prying through the water until the recovering arm comes through. As the recovering arm is coming through and you're using your hips, opening your hips to recover and then also snapping your hips to catch the anchor and place the other arm. It's an efficient way to apply power and also glide out on the same stroke. You're gonna go again and then I'm, I'm gonna give you a tap. I'm gonna make sure your hand placement is good. And then I'm going to give you a tap when I want you to think about high elbows in the water. Okay. And by, by, when I give you the tap, you're going to take away those paddles that you have for the, that are your hands. Yeah. You're going to turn them into fists, and you're going to really rely on the forearm as a paddle. Okay. You're anchoring in, you're feeling the water pressing against here, and you're teaching your elbow, with, with the high elbow, you're teaching your, your muscles to, to work with the surface area that they have, which is less now than it is when you have the paddle. Okay. So we'll go fist drill for a little bit. You're probably gonna find that your stroke cadence has to increase, mm -hmm. that's okay. We'll do fist drill for a little bit, we'll see what we see with the elbows, I'll go underwater and watch, and then <clears throat> we'll come off of fist drill and go back to open hands, and we'll see what you notice in the interim. Okay. 10 strokes normal, okay. 10 strokes fist drill. Uh, this pool has a 54-inch water depth, and hi to the UK, hi to Scotland, thanks to everyone who's been joining since we started. We also have pools in 42-inch water depth and 48. This is the uh, one of our deeper models, but uh, you can do that. As far as length and width, you can customize in one-foot increments. It's totally modular, that's how we get it indoors. Wider, get them wider apart. Keep going. 
Hey to everyone who's joining us. Thank you. That's good. It, it feels hey. weird because you took away your paddle. Yeah. But what you're teaching yourself to do is rely on that higher elbow position. Yeah. And still gliding, mm -hmm. right? Working on propelling yourself with the surface area that you have. You come through the recovery, place your hand in the water, and, and just before that recovering arm places, you're using your, your hips to set the anchor. So we're going to go through the sequence again. You'll swim normal five or ten strokes, go on the fist drill for a few strokes, and then really focus on wide, wide, wide fist placement out in front of you and using your hips to drive that wide placement. Using, and at the same time that you're using your hips to drive the wide placement, you're also using your hips to set the anchor. I'll show you for a couple strokes what it's gonna look like, okay. and then you'll do the same thing. Uh, Jeff's the best. We use uh, copper silver purification and also UV. There's very little chlorine. I'm standing right next to the pool. I don't smell any chlorine right now, but there is a little in it. Hey, Philly, thanks for joining. We're in Aston, PA, just uh, in Delaware County, right nearby. Rose is a name. This is an endless pool coaching session. They're swimming in place you against place the current. Place your arms out in front with the high elbows once you go on the fist. Thanks, most of you. If I pronounce that correctly, hopefully. Her crystal salt water is great, but there's a lot of metal components, so it um, it can be corrosive. Wider, keep wider on that right arm. You're good on your left arm. Keep going wider on your right arm. Uh, G.E. Lopez, the pool prices really vary depending on the size and the options you get. You like you're give us a call. A yeah, like, happy to give you a quote like on something like that works like, for you. Kind of comes in. Go back to fingertip drill for a few strokes okay. to, to fix that. Over exaggerate it. Make it feel really awkward. Yeah. Because like I said before, the chances are that if you're coming in too close to center line and you're right here and you feel like you're going wide and you come here, you're still too close to center line. Yeah. Really make it feel like, 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 like you're doing the YMCA dance. Make it yeah. feel really wide and awkward. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Jackie, our swimmer, is an age group triathlete, so she'll probably do a number of competitions this year. So yeah, she is training. Um, at the end, maybe we can get Adam to take it at top speed, see how long he can last. We'll show you what the pool can do. Yeah, he's shaking his head, but we'll see what we can do to like show you this thing at top speed. The monthly cost is similar to what you spend on a hot tub because it's about it's the good. same size. Keep going at it. I'm going to fiddle with it, but I'll tap you on the head when it stops. Okay. It also depends on how much you're using it. You're using a standard electrical outlet to run the motor. But most people will only use it maybe like an hour well, a day. It feels weird. <laughs> you, you have this sen sensation that when you're breathing on your left side, you're trying to bring your right arm down. So if yeah. I'm here and I can catch your hand and hold it, yeah. it's going to give you the sensation of, wait a minute, I'm not supposed to bring my arm down yet. Yeah, I keep I, you're doing that to maintain balance, but once you sweep your arm down when you're breathing on your, your left hand side, you're not propelling anything forward. So if you stay streamlined and you keep your right arm forward when you're rolling to your left to breathe, that's the better thing to do. Uh, thanks, Sinoboli. Sino Hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. Yeah, she's a really excellent swimmer. She's doing great. It's okay. It's okay. Uh, per Crystal, it is heated. We keep it in the low 80s. And yes, we do ship outside the U.S. Um, we have endless pools in over 100 countries right now, all around the world. Good, good. So 
we're going to do 10 more strokes with the fist drill with high elbows. And then you're going to open up your hands without stopping and swim normally then. And see if you notice any difference in the, the first two or three strokes when you transition from swimming with your fist to opening up your hand. Okay. And you're, you're going to feel something interesting. Okay. Adam, why do you keep holding her arms? Jackie has a feeling that when she's breathing on one side, that the opposite arm needs to drop down and out of the way to compensate for the, the off-balance sensation that she has. It's almost like if you're laying flat on a balance beam and you turn your head one way, your, your center of gravity is going to change and you're going to feel compelled to move your, your opposite arm a little bit. So same way in the water. If you can find balance with your arms streamlined and out in front of you while you're breathing, your arm is then in a much better position to apply power later than if you've swept it down through the stroke and you've, you've lost that part of the stroke by the time your recovering arm comes in in front of you and you can apply power. So what I'm doing with Jackie's arm is trying to, to catch it and give her the sensation that, nope, it's okay to leave that arm out in front. Find your balance with your arm out in front. Wait for the recovering arm to come through so that you can anchor in. When you came off with fist drill there, high elbows, you opened up your hand for the paddle. Did you notice a little bit more of a surge? Yeah. Yeah. So what the fist drill is doing is teaching you to use more of that surface area to apply pressure to the water surface. And then when you add in the paddle that you have had all along, yeah, your, your muscle memory is realizing, wait a minute, if I have the high elbows and I have the full paddle, I can surge forward a little bit more. Yeah. I'm gonna turn the speed up just a little bit. I'm gonna show the same drill, okay. and I'm gonna show the stroke cadence changing. Okay. Yeah, it was, and also by awkwardly going wider, like then it just was more natural to work into my regular stroke. Good. With the wider position, you're you're setting it up to have higher elbows and get the leverage from the, the right muscle groups. So we'll go ten strokes of fist drill. Watch the cadence, and then I'll open up my hands and see if the cadence slows at all. When he's done swimming, we'll ask him if he has to keep his arms straight when he's breathing. See how the cadence was slowing down once I opened up my hands? Yeah. You get a bigger bite in the water and you get yourself used to what does it feel like to have that bite every stroke? Okay. Slow it down again a little bit. We're going to play with some paddles now. Okay. <laughs> now the paddle is going to make your hand, that paddle that we were talking about, even wider. Yeah. This is going to give you some strength work, and it's not great to use the paddles a lot if you haven't yeah. been using them at all because it can put extra stress on your shoulders. Mm -hmm. But the nice thing about these paddles is it forces you to be with your fingertips down and in the right position to get the anchor. If you're, some people will come into the water with their fingertips first and then they'll level out. Some people will come in this way and then come pull back with their elbow too much. And rather than having the, the anchor opposite the direction they're trying to go, right, physics, they'll drop their elbow down first rather than having their elbow yeah. high. See what, what, what my hand position does? And if their elbow pulls, then they're dragging, slicing their hand through the water and they're not, they're not getting that bite. So with a paddle like this, where it's not really strapped onto my hand, <clears throat> unless I'm in this position, it's gonna, it's gonna flop off. It's gonna, you're gonna feel it. Yeah. It's not gonna fall off completely, but you're, it's, it's gonna tell you that your hand is, isn't coming through the anchor phase the right way. So slowing it down a little bit, just to get you used to the feeling. That's a uh, swim paddle from. It's a Finney swim paddle. It, Finney's makes swimming equipment. They're manufactured um, in California. They have one of our elite pools there, and they do product design and testing there. And it's uh, they've got a lot of cool toys that we, we like to play with here. Yeah. This yeah. one just goes. Your thumb just goes through it like a plate. Uh, George, I think you asked that this looked like an endless pool. It is an endless pool brand swimming machine. That's exactly so those, what those it is. Those, think about the mechanics. 
thing about a loose recovery, you got to apply, apply like a little bit of pressure to keep, keep it on your hand through the recovery, but it's, it's going to force your fingertips down and yeah, high elbows. And it's weird, like if you, if, you, if you dip it all, it just kind of like falls. Yeah, it, it'll, it'll kind of flap away from your hand, yeah. and that's telling you no, not the right way to go. Um, high elbows. Bobby, yeah, if you're interested, this is our factory showroom. If you're really interested in buying a pool, we'd love to have you come down and give it a shot. Uh, the pool works. It's uh, with a propeller underneath. The unit Adam has his hand on is where the swim current is generated. Uh, it's got 52 speeds, and it feeds through the back. If you can see what look like benches around the edges, uh, that channels the water back, which is why the water is so calm outside the current. Keep thinking about... Hands coming in wide up front. Keep thinking about a catch-up drill where you're, you're gliding and you're extending and you wait for the other hands to come through the recovery. Go back to your basic mechanics. Okay. Sw swim slower, yeah. and and you can with a bigger surface area, you can you can get enough bite in the water to get a little more propulsion. So slow down your cadence and think about the mechanics. Uh, thanks, George. Um, the hand paddles are not for competition; they're just for training purposes only. Going. I'm gonna I'm gonna do that tabletop thing again. Um, pricing varies so much. I'd invite you to give us a call. Um, our number's on our website, endlesspools.com. Ah, thanks for all the thumbs up. Um, the pool is heated. We usually keep that's, it in the low it. 80s. No, no bending at the wrist. Try and keep the wrist and the forearm in the same plane. And get your elbows high on the anchor face. Um, it does get warmer, but when you're doing activity in it, low 80s is about where you want it so you don't risk overheating. Hey to everyone who's joining, thank you. Go back to your hips. When I say swim from your hips, it means use the larger muscle groups here to keep rotating around that, that axis to go through your head, through your chest, through your crotch. You can't bend sideways if you have that, that pole there. You can only rotate around it. So if you feel yourself starting to flutter around, go back to the basics. Am I swimming from my hips? Am I using the core, the trunk muscle groups to drive my hand placement? Do I feel that rotation around the same axis? Do I feel the rotation even? on both sides. The interesting thing about when the current is flowing over you, it can do a little bit like a wind tunnel effect. So if you're off balance on one side a little bit and not the other, it'll, it'll catch that and it'll make, it'll exaggerate the, the feeling that you're moving around in the current. Yeah. All of the water that's coming out of the propulsion housing is always coming at the same speed yeah. that you set it to. So important to, to go back to basics and think about your mechanics and your efficiency. Yeah. And again, look at the mirror, and if you, if you draw a line down the center of that mirror, and you're swimming on top of that line, and you do your rotation, do you, do you see that, that center line axis, or do you see one hip coming further down than the other? You got to pay attention. Uh, George Carp, we have a lot of pools in the UK, a lot of the official uh, authorized dealers as well. Um, so yeah, uh, give us a call or check us out at uh, our UK site, uh, endlesspools.co.uk, I believe. Hey, New Orleans, thanks for joining us. Uh, someone named Donnelly asked a question. I'm sorry, it's like a lot of messages coming through, and if you can uh, kindly repeat it, I'll happily answer your question. I'm forgetting what it is right now. I'm going to turn it up a little bit, because yeah. you're starting to get the hang of it, and you're, you're surging forward a little bit. Yeah. Okay. One of the cool things is that the water doesn't change its pace like we just talked about, but when you notice that you're making an efficiency change, you've been swimming with the paddles the whole time, but you're, if you're doing something that's a little bit more efficient and you start to hit the front, that means yeah. you're swimming faster. That means you made an improvement. So we'll go up just one step, just a little bit faster. Stay on the drill that you were doing. A few more with this, and then we'll go back to the fist drill and see what kind of repeated muscle memory types of impressions we're making here. 
Um, we are in horizontal mode just because she's laid out swimming. Donnelly, you had asked if it was uh, used by professionals. Yes, Olympic swimmers use this at uh, Swim Mac under Coach Dave Marsh. Uh, Dave Salo at Trojan Swim Club uses it. There's one at the uh, um, U.S. Olympic Training Center in Colorado Springs. Lot and Michigan. Yeah, yeah, a lot of uh, NCAA swim teams use them as well, including Michigan. Uh, Auburn, Harvard, Kentucky. Uh, University of Louisville, that is. It's good. Thank you so much. Good. Ditch the paddles, go back to fist drill. And then, so again, swim normal for a few. Take it out. Watch yourself in the mirror. Think about that hand placement at the front end. You've got to set up the good hand placement in order to have a good anchor phase of the stroke. <clears throat> Take a few strokes normally, go to fist drill, maybe even think about fist drill and catch up drill so that you're still swimming with one arm in front, good wide shoulder placement, high elbows, go back to the hand open and see if you're surging forward again. Um, if you stop swimming at all, you can easily step to the side. You'll notice where Adam is, our coach, the water's pretty calm. Um, the current just goes down the center, and then we have channels to funnel the water back, so there's no turbulence on the sides. There is a mirror underwater, yeah. Um, and that's what helps you stay centered. Um, there'll be a, you know some kind of mark down there, but it's much easier with the mirror to monitor your own stroke, make changes in real time, and keep you centered in the current. It's pretty easy to adapt to once you get going. Yeah, there. Yeah. Keep, keep your elbows high. Keep, keep hey, friends, thanks high, for joining high, us. High. Catch it high and it should be, feel, feel weird in here, but then you start to transfer the muscles down into your chest. Wide and high. Yep. Ah, Nintendo Nate, thank you. Uh, she is not a pro kickbox, she is uh, an age group. Nice. I'm going to get into the housing. You get a little bit more placement, and I'm in a good position when I'm driving my hips to set the anchor for the glide as. I'm anchoring in with the high elbow. Hi to everyone who's still joining. Thanks. Hello, Berlin. Well All right, New Zealand. Thank you. We do have endless pools in New Zealand as well. Oh, hey, Boothman, we're in Aston here. Like I was doing? <laughs> sure, yeah. Slow it down a little bit. You tired, Adam? Not yet. <laughs> Not yet. <laughs> Thanks for asking, Texas. Appreciate okay. it. <laughs> so, one arm only allows you to isolate one side from the other side. Really think about the mechanics of each arm. Okay. Without hustling through it so much that you feel rushed. So, yeah. when I was doing it, it was take a stroke, roll, take a stroke, roll, almost as if I was going through rotation on the other staying side, streamlined. but not. Yeah. Just staying streamlined and rolling. Some people like to do it with their hand out in front, some people like to do it with their hand on a kickboard, some people like to do it with their hand down at their side. Okay. Matter of preference and if you're feeling stressed in your shoulders or not, but with the mirror on the bottom, you can see where's my hand placement. Am I using my hip enough to allow my elbow to come up high and get that good anchor. How far down through my stroke am I coming? Am I ending at my hip or am I pushing it all the way down? Am I rushing things on the recovery or am I loose on the recovery? Mm -hmm. You can think about all that stuff just on one side. Mm -hmm. And the mirror is, is really helpful to, yeah. to show you what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> some a little bit normally. And then five strokes one side, some a little normally, five strokes the other side, and see what you see, play around with it. 
The water in this pool is heated. Yeah, there's a lot of, a, a, a lot of activity from Russia here. Uh, we'll try to accommodate that in our next periscope. But the water is heated. It's in the low 80s, which is like, a what good temperature for uh, pretty heavy swimming. This is not a jacuzzi. This is an endless pool brand swimming machine. Nice. Um, we do have models closer to hot tubs called swim spas, molded acrylic with uh, hydrotherapy seats and all that. It's a little, little bit of you getting used to yeah. if you've never done that drill before. <laughs> but it's, like I was saying before, with the, the fist drill coming off and then swimming normally, always good to swim drill and then swim normally for a little bit mm -hmm. uh, so that you make that, that good impression. So if you're doing 10 strokes with your right arm only, mm -hmm. swim five strokes normally and see if that elbow position carries through. Yeah. See if that wide hand placement carries through. If you're able to think about it without the other arm doing something else off balance or throwing you sideways, yeah. then better to do that on its own. Yeah. You're gonna swim it out for just a little bit longer and, and away you go? Sure. <laughs> One of the users wanted to see it on high speed, so I don't know when the right time to mess with Jackie would be. Right now would be the time. Hello, Russia. Thanks for joining us. And this is it going on top speed. <laughs> As you can see, it's a rough pace to keep up with. I'll give it a couple, but that's about all I've got. All right, Adam's going to take it to top speed here. We'll see how, how long you can go. <laughs> Great job, Adam. Great job, Jackie. Thank you, everyone who joined Thanks, us. Everybody. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Have a great day. We're out for now.